Today we're going to discuss cost of running small transport business in the United Kingdom. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Agnes with Josh. Today we're discussing what you guys been asking about having seen our previous video where we talked about struggles of small business in the United Kingdom or small transport business in the United Kingdom. And today we're going to talk about the costs of running such small business. Josh opened the transport business in August 2020. So it's been about a year and a half since it's been up and running. But there were some costs before we even started the business to consider. So we want to just run through all the costs that we have incurred. We got to remember that every business will have different expenses because it will depend on many factors. And we are going to talk about our experiences. So if your costs are higher or lower, it is down to the business that you're running. So currently we owe two trucks and two trailers. Let's take it from the beginning. Before you even start operating business, there will be a few costs that you have to consider. The first one is the application process. So before you get the operating license and get your trucks on the road, before you even get your trucks, you have to apply for the operating license because then there is no point to buying the trucks before you get the license. So the application form that you can fill in online on gov.uk cost 257 pounds. Also on top of the application, there's an advertisement in a local newspaper and that can vary because it depends which newspaper you reach out to, right? Yeah, How much the areas, we pay? yeah. So we paid about 350 pounds. We paid actually twice. So first we had operated license in Leighton Buzzard. That was 280 pounds. And then second, we had operated license in a different area and that was slightly more expensive. So it's, it depends on area to area. Um, some papers charge more than others. Mm -hmm. And then once the license is granted, we had to pay the license, which is what, 401 pounds, right? That's correct. Yes. There is also a cost of getting the desk. And I can't quite find and remember how much we paid for it, but I think it's 100 pounds per disc. Yeah, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure. So mm -hmm. I think it could be between, I don't know, 30 pounds to 100 pounds. I'm not really sure. So yeah, just go with about, say, 50 mm -hmm. pounds disc. There is also a money that you're going to have to have available to you in case your business is struggling and you need to provide your financial standing. So for first track, for one track that you're running, for standard national license, you will need to have 8,000 pounds for first track and 4,500 pounds for every single other track. And that money you cannot touch. It has to remain in your account at all the time. All the time. So uh, you need yeah. to have access to these funds. It could be a credit card, it could be a cash in your account. You just have to have those money available. If DBSA slash traffic commissioner, if they having to check it, you need to have those funds available. There is also cost that you need to consider of investing in the truck. So you have three options really to consider. You can either buy it cash upfront, which probably isn't the best thing because everyone needs cash to begin with. There is also leasing option and there is finance option. So again, you can go for brand new vehicle or you can go for secondhand vehicle, which is what we went for. We bought a good vehicle secondhand from Volvo and these vehicles, we had to pay a deposit of 18,000 pounds for both trucks and trailers in order to get the ownership of them. And then now we're paying a finance every single month. Find your truck, put the deposit in, and get while you waiting for your operating license, your truck is being prepared. So once you get your operating license, you go in there, get your trucks. Because once you get your operating license, you've spent so much money and time, you don't want to wait month, two months looking for a truck. Mm -hmm. It was like our operating license came, and then literally days later, we had our trucks. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, it's, it it's, really and, and, and then and then after we got a truck, the following day we were actually working. So. We, there was no downtime, we actually, you know, we had to make the money. So mm -hmm. I know people who have actually got their brake license and, 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 they're still, and they're still looking for trucks. And I would get a mm -hmm. phone call saying, please, would you help us find those trucks? Could you help us trade? So they've spent all the money uh, having a brake license and yet they're not able to start the work. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to put everything in, in place so it kind of falls mm -hmm. and you have to do your homework before you before you go into yeah. the business yeah so there will be another things that you have to do pre-time that you start operating so as a company you also have to consider what software you're going to use for taco checks we also had to purchase a license on the Hulich exchange so this is the platform that we use um, on a daily basis to bid for work and that license isn't the cheapest so that's again upfront cost that you have to incur a Hulich exchange is an online platform where you pick up work from. Um, when you're a new business, no one's gonna give you contracts, you know, you're not gonna get work straight away. 
So you need to get a bit of work coming from here and there. Holy's Exchange is like one of the main online workplace where people advertise their overspill. So companies were unable to carry their job due to whatever reason, they will put it on Holy Exchange and then people will bid for it. So, you know, whoever is the right person. Carriers would bid yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, carriers would bid for it like myself. And then they issue the work. But you develop a relationship over time. So once you are there, you develop your business, you Feedback. get to know people, you know, you're, you're in the market, one day you land a contract, then you don't need to be on there. But there are many platforms like Amazon, Backload, and there's a few other small ones as well. Holy Exchange is the main one and then they do charge quite, quite a fair bit for the membership. Okay, so having considered that, once you actually start running your business, there's three types of costs to worry about. One of them is a standing cost, then there's a running cost and other costs. Within the standing cost, you have depreciation, administration, road tax, insurance, and driver's wages. We will discuss all of those costs in a minute, how much we actually pay for our little business. But I just wanna list them as per what the costs you have to incur. Then you have running costs such as fuel, tires, and the maintenance. And then you have other costs such as night outs, tolls, or ferry crossing. So we're going just to talk about our monthly costs, but they vary so much. Well, obviously some costs are fixed direct debits and we don't really, they don't change on a monthly basis. Most of the costs vary depending on the month. So if it's a very busy month, then obviously the costs of fuel, for example, or driver wages would go significantly higher up than the months that we don't have such a busy time. All right, I would like to give a scenario um, on the jobs. A lot of people think that if you have your transport business... But does that, you, does you, that you, include the costs that you want to talk about? You, yeah, you, you're making a killing. Now, I'll give you a scenario, for example. Uh, a customer calls up for the job. Uh, the job is, for example, London to Scotland. Just say 300 miles a job. I would price all that job for, say, £1,200. There's no guarantee that there will be load back, but if you get a load back, that's the bonus. Taking into consideration that driver will have to have a night out, so you're looking at two days' wages of a driver. So current driver rate is about £200. So you're looking at 400 pounds driver's wages. On top, you're looking at about 400 pound minimum diesel. That's 800 pounds. And then on top, you're looking at um, night out, which is about average, about, I think about 35 pounds. And then you're looking at parking at services. That's another 35 pounds. So that's 70 pounds. So you're looking at what, 870 pounds at your expense. And God forbid, if you have a puncture uh, there, or you have a you know tire, you need a tire chain you're replacing. A new tire will set you back about 400 pounds uh, on the roadside recovery. So that puncture obviously will delay and cost you so. But there is yeah. also depreciation. There is admin, yeah, there's yeah. insurance that you, yeah. if you was to count this into the cost, which yeah. you should really, if you price um, the job properly, yeah. then that would be another 100 pounds on top. So even though it sounds great, you know, yeah, 1200 pound, but after all the expenses and stuff, you are actually picking up leftover bits and bobs, you know, whatever is left over. So it is very competitive market to get into and it's very, very stressful. You have to be on your toes. And if you're not the sort of person that you want to get up and go and if the phone rings at 2 a.m. and you're not up and ready to go, then it's not it's not for you. you know? yeah. yeah. And we, we known people who were in a business and they were just not ready to put the hours, they were not ready to stay out, they were not ready to go out there for work and they quit. They just were not able to do it. Yeah. So let me just discuss the monthly average cost that we are going through and I'm not going to list them according to standing, running or other costs. I'm just going to list things that we do incur every single month. To begin with, we have to park our vehicles. Those that are listening to this video probably know that you can't just park your vehicles outside your house or anywhere on the street. You do have to find what is called an operating center and that is where you can legally park your vehicles. If you are returning to the base every single day. Obviously, there would be odd nights where you have to par park at the services, but still the monthly cost of parking the vehicle, depending on the area, it costs us £700 a month. Then obviously there is a finance we did discuss that we have got our vehicles and our trailers financed. So the finance alone is £1,840. We have finance for three years. So after three years, obviously that finance cost will go away. But the first initial first few, especially first year, second year and the third year, it is very difficult because you have all the costs coming in and 
you have to just manage. We have periodic maintenance inspection checks and MOTs and also any maintenance checks that comes within and that again can vary. Our PMI is booked every nine weeks and if there is anything to fix could cost anything from 300 to 2000 pounds in a month. That cost can vary significantly depending on what breaks, if anything breaks, but there is at least minimum of £300 a month of costs that you're looking for. Well, during the time of um, MOT for the vehicles, for the units and the trailers, it cost us about six, £7,000 in a matter of one month. And the loss, obviously, while the vehicle is off-road as well. So yeah. Yeah, if you have a major issue with the vehicle and your vehicle is not on the road for one month, now you have to look at the money lost that you could generate not only that and the money you're paying out as well so you could be out of pocket very quick yeah fuel is being one of the biggest costs so you're looking at six thousand to eight thousand pound a month yeah on average and that comes direct debit out of your account because obviously we do hold um fuel cards so we try to use the one that gives us the best rate per week and then every single week they just take the money out of your account so again you have to have that cash availability so that they can take it out without charging you for late direct debit charges. Then we have driving wages. And as Josh explained, drivers can cost up to 200 pounds a day. And at the beginning, Josh wasn't even paying himself anything just to make sure that we have a cash flow to run the business. But that can cost anything between six to eight thousand pounds a month. Insurance is the next very big cost to pay, and we do tend to pay up front for the whole year. Uh, but if you do select a monthly option, if you divide that by 12 months, it costs us around one thousand pounds per month. There is also a road tax that we have to pay. We do pay that up front, but it costs about 120 pounds per month. And then you have overhead. So as we did discuss at the beginning, we do pay for the whole exchange platform. We have a software that tracks the vehicles. Uh, we also have a software that helps us to read the TACO because we have to keep a record of it. We have to pay accountant fees. We have to pay transport manager fees. I'm the transport manager in the business, but we did have a transport manager externally. We also have to pay for mobile phones, for anything that you need, such as washing up liquid. AdBlue is another thing I forgot to mention. So when you yeah. fuel up, you also have to have AdBlue if you're having diesel vehicle. Average right? about 300 pound a month. Yeah, that's about 300 pounds a month. So overall, the estimated cost of running two vehicles per month on a standard national license is about twelve thousand pounds but on the busy days on a busy month it can go up to twenty thousand pounds so this is the money that you need available in your account before you even start thinking of profiting anything from it so as you can see guys it's not an easy piece of cake it's very stressful and you do have to work hard to get to the point where you have twelve thousand pounds in your account before you can even start thinking of making any money so we hope you guys have found this informative i will be covering a little bit more of the topics on operating license because i did find that quite a lot of you is interested quite a lot of you are beginners thinking of opening the business and asking us lots of questions about whether it's a viable thing to do whether it's a good business to run whether it's expensive how much revenue you make we will make a video as well about how much roughly we get left after the cost of running it but you have to keep watching to see another video and, and if we have missed anything out uh, we possibly have just yeah just give us a heads up and we'll mention the next video yeah again this is as per our business it could be that if you having lease option on your vehicles it would be a different cost that you're paying so it is what we it, experience you know what? it's not only about haulage industry if you're looking to start a car rental business you're looking at similar similar thing you know if you're looking at home rental business you know property management you you know you're, you're renting a house it's similar similar scenario you know you have to take consideration all these costs mm -hmm. and well, you have so. to be prepared to work really really hard especially the first first two three years until you establish yourself well until you can grow to the size where you can have people helping you manage the business yeah. but at the beginning it's all on you hard work lots of grit and uh, more boldness as well yeah People we're going to get that sorted don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so what you do you work hard you lose your hair and then you make the money and to go, and go, to, to go to turkey and get your hair done <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for watching and if you have any more questions that you would like us to cover in regards of the business please let us know in the comments below and we hope to see you soon thank you very much thank, thank you for watching. You. Bye. Bye.